Let's talk about two more types of columns that you can add from within the query editor, index columns and conditional columns. So starting with index columns, you'll find the option right here in the add column menu. And basically what an index column is, it's a list of sequential values that uniquely identify each individual row of a table. Typically these start from zero or one, and they're most often used to create unique keys or IDs that can be used to form relationships with other tables. And I know we've been kind of hinting at this idea quite a bit. That's going to be covered in depth in the data modeling 101 section of the course. So index columns, super simple. Moving on to conditional columns. These are a bit more interesting. You can find them right there above the index column option in the add column tab. And basically these allow you to define new fields based on logical rules or if then conditions. So example that we're going to be walking through is creating a new conditional column that we're naming quantity type. And the way that we want to define quantity type is a function of the order quantity column. So we can tell Power BI for any row in our table where the order quantity equals one, I want to set my quantity type equal to single item. If my order quantity is greater than one, I want to set my quantity type to multiple items. And then you always have this kind of catch all value if false otherwise statement at the end. That's basically the value that you want your column to take in the case that all of the rows or line items above are false. So Power BI is going to cycle through each row from top to bottom. And if none of those conditions are met, that otherwise statement is the value that's returned. So let's open up our AdventureWorks report and see what this looks like in Power BI. All right, so I'm looking at the relationships view. I see the three tables, three connections that we already have in place. We're going to go ahead and add a fourth now. So follow along. We're going to get more data from a CSV. And this time I want my AdventureWorks sales 2017 file. And preview looks good. Let's go ahead and edit it to jump into the query editor. And right off the bat, let's simplify this table name a little bit. We're just going to change this to AW Sales 2017. Now you'll notice that I'm not adding the word lookup to this table name, just like I did with product, customer, and calendar. And that's intentional because we're not dealing with a lookup table here. We're dealing with something called a data or a fact table. And we're going to explain what that means in the data modeling section of the course. But to give you a quick teaser, Essentially, we're looking at order quantities and order line items here with keys that will allow us to map those orders to territories, to customers, to products, and if I scroll all the way over, to dates. So no need to dive any deeper than that quite yet. Just put that in your back pocket because that will come into play in the next section of the course. So why don't we go ahead and practice adding an index column. So we'll add column, index, and if I drop down that menu, you can select to start from zero or one, or if you're feeling crazy, you can start with any custom number you choose. In this case, my keys or my ID columns typically start from one, so we can choose that option. Creates a new column here at the end. Kind of interesting, it formatted it as a decimal number, which doesn't really matter, but let's go ahead and make it a whole number, just like the other columns here. And a little shortcut, instead of dragging it to the beginning of the table, you can right click, and use this move option and move it to the beginning just in one click. So there we go. Maybe this is something like an order ID that we want to use to kind of track each individual order, in which case we could rename the column. But to be honest, we don't need this ID or key column here. In fact, it may just complicate and confuse things down the road. So I'm actually going to right click and remove this column. Now what's interesting here is that I've landed basically exactly where I started. This is the table in its current untouched form, but you'll notice that there are now seven steps in my applied steps here, because even though I removed my index column, that step was recorded and that step still exists here in the history of my applied steps. So what this means is that whenever this sales 2017 connection is refreshed, Power BI is going to run through all of these applied steps. It's going to add an index column, change the type, 
move it to the beginning of the table, and then delete it, which is really inefficient and downright silly when you think about it. So rather than just calling it a day because I'm back at the correct table format, the proper approach here would be to actually remove all of those steps back to before I even added the index column in the first place. And now nothing's changed with my table preview. This is its original raw form, but now I only have three applied steps instead of seven. So kind of an important nuance to keep in mind there and a good demonstration of how these applied steps are actually working. Now, last little demo, let's go ahead and add a conditional column right here above index. This opens up my dialog box and we're gonna name this column quantity type. And just like we talked about, we're gonna say, okay, for every row in this table, if my order quantity equals a value of one, then the output or the value that my quantity type column should take is single item, just like that. Now I can press this button to add a new rule and it gives me an else if line. So if this first row condition is not met, then what's the next thing you check for? Well, you check that order quantity is greater than one, in which case my output or my quantity type column should equal multiple items. And you could keep adding conditions here if you had more complex scenarios. In this case, what we have here is a fully comprehensive and mutually exclusive list of conditions. We don't have any rows with an order quantity of zero, and I sure hope we don't have any rows with a quantity of negative values. So that just leaves us with two possible options. You've ordered one thing or you've ordered more than one thing. But that said, as a best practice kind of rule of thumb, I always put an otherwise value in here. So let's just say, you know, if, if something's crazy, we get some weird data that we weren't anticipating, we'll just set quantity type to other and press OK. And there you go, you've got our new column, quantity type. You can see that it's taking values of either multiple or single item based on this order quantity column. And if we look at our header dropdown, one thing to call out here, it does show that the only two items or the only two options in this column are multiple items and single item. You'll often see this little flag that says list may be incomplete. That's just telling you that Power BI looked at a small sample of rows within that column in order to produce the list above. And that's just to save memory and processing power. But if you want Power BI to check the entire column to make sure that this list is comprehensive, just press the load more button and that flag goes away. And this confirms that this quantity type column that we just created contains two values, multiple items and single item. So we'll press okay. And that's just about all we need to do. So let's go ahead and enter our home tab and press close and apply. All right, let's save our workbook and keep moving on.